Hey guys, I know I said the last one was going to be it, but I want to do one more video on the Who is Israel series. So this is going to be video 13 on the Who is Israel series. And I want to look at an allegory, but not one of my own, but one that the Apostle Paul shares with the Church of Galatia. And if you look at Galatians chapter 4, beginning in verse 22, the Bible reads, For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, Agar, and the other by a free woman, Sarah. So he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, Ishmael. But he of the free woman was by promise, Isaac. <clears throat> Verse 24, which things are an allegory for these are the two covenants. So there's two covenants. There's an old covenant. And the Bible makes it very clear that the new covenant replaces the old covenant. And Paul is going to unpack that here. So these are the two covenants, or an allegory for the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. So she is the, the, the woman of bondage, and she gave birth to Ishmael. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem, which now is. See that? See how even though they claim lineage to Isaac, the Jews over in Israel, the one that, that fits this allegory, the Bible attributes to Agar that uh, of bondage, because at the time the Jews were persecuting the Christians, and they who were of Jerusalem were obviously the Jews. And it says, for this Agar is, is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jer Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children, the Jews. Okay, because they're not saved as a, a vast majority, they were lost. And the Bible says they're in bondage. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. That's heavenly Jerusalem. And is the mother of us all. If we're saved, our mother is heavenly Jerusalem. And at the end of the book of Revelation, it's called the bride of Christ. And I saw new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. Um, and that's it says, behold, I'll show you the Lamb's wife. And then new Jerusalem came down. So that's... That's the mother of the saved, but the mother of the lost, the ones that are in bondage, is, is the old Jerusalem, which is why I want nothing to do with the old Jerusalem. For it is written, verse 27, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not, for the desolate hath many more children than, he, than she which hath an husband. So the desolate, think about that. We used to be called desolate. The Gentiles used to be called not a people. The Gentiles used to be uh, completely um, foreign and strangers to the covenants of promise. But the Bible says that we have many more children than that of, uh, than she which hath an husband. If you remember, God um, <clears throat> is married to Israel. That's it. That was his bride, physical Israel, but they rejected him. The Bible says he came unto his own, his own received him not. And that that uh, physical seed of Israel, or I'm sorry, the physical nation of Israel was replaced with the spiritual nation of Israel. And the saved of the spiritual nation of Israel hath many more children than, he, than she which hath an husband, the physical part of it. So there's many more spiritual than there ever was physical uh, children of the a nation of Israel. Verse 28, But now, brethren, as Isaac was, but, or, or, sorry, but uh, now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. So we are the children of promise. Uh, Romans chapter 9, the Bible says, the um, uh, the, they that are of the flesh, these are not the children of promise. Speaking of the Jews there, speaking of them that were claiming uh, lineage to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the Bible says in here, verse 28, here, the Gentile church of Galatia, but we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. So who are the promises to? The saved. It could have been Old Testament saints. It could have been Old Testament Israel. It could be uh, New Testament saints. It's just the saved comprised that make up the Israel of God. That, those are the children of promise, uh, those that believe in the Messiah, and that Messiah is Jesus Christ. Verse 29, but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. And if you can remember, that was the quarrel between Isaac and Ishmael. There was that persecution there. And he's saying that's exactly what's happening now at the time here when Paul's writing. It was the Jews who was persecuting the church of God. Even Paul himself in Galatians 1 said, 
um, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it and profited in the Jews above, uh, and profited in, um, the Jews above many mine equals in my no own nation, being much more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my father. So it was the Jews persecuting the Christians. And he's saying, just like it was back and then with Isaac and Ishmael, even so it is now. So it's a perfect fitting allegory. <clears throat> Nevertheless, verse 30, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman. Now remember, it just said Israel was taught, was the allegory for the bondwoman. And this verse, and it says that in verse uh, 24, in verse uh, 25. In this verse, in verse 30, it's saying, cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Those that are in Israel, those that are just claiming it, lineage to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but they do not believe in Jesus Christ, they're not saved. They will not be heir with the son of the free woman, which the Bible says attributes to us as saved people. So we will not rule and reign with unsaved Jews. We will not ru rule and reign with physical lineage. We will rule and reign with Christ as the spiritual nation of Israel comprised of all saved throughout time from the beginning of time to the end of time. <clears throat> Verse 31, so then, brethren, we are not the children of the bondwoman, but of the free. So the Bible makes it very clear in this allegory when you break down the two covenants, um, and the, the free woman and the bond woman that he attributes the, the, the saved people, whether they be Jew, Gentile, male, female, Greek, everybody wants to put this division between the Jews and the Gentiles and the church. But this is talking about two covenants, two groups of people saved and lost, and they, there will not be uh, spiritual Israel being heir with physical Israel. It will just be spiritual Israel. So the Bible makes it very clear in the book of Galatians, and I'm going to wrap up this series on who is Israel. And hopefully you've seen through scripture that Israel is, uh, according to Galatians chapter 6, the Israel of God, uh, verse 16, as many as walk according to this rule, peace be upon them and mercy and upon the Israel of God is speaking of saved people, not that physical Middle Eastern country overseas.